Welcome to the top 10 things you didn't know about the Pittsburgh Steelers right here on Kickoff Zone. Prepare to discover the unseen, the unexpected, and the unforgettable aspects of a team that has graced the gridiron with glory and grit. Join us as we peel back the layers of black and gold. Number 10, yellow kitchen towel to icon symbol. The terrible towel, a symbol now synonymous with the Pittsburgh Steelers, emerged from the mind of one man, broadcaster Myron Cope. In 1975, with the Steelers seeking their second Super Bowl title, Cope envisioned a unifying symbol for fans. He asked them to bring a yellow dish towel to the playoff game against the Baltimore Colts. The sight of thousands of twirling towels was a spectacle that has since become legendary. Now the terrible towel is not just a towel, it's an emblem of pride, passion, and part of the game day ritual, and an object of superstition for some. Proceeds from the sales even support a school for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities, adding a philanthropic touch to this iconic piece of fan culture. Number nine, Pirates to Steelers. Embark with us on a journey back to the year 1933, when the storied history of the Pittsburgh Steelers began, not as the Steelers, but as the Pittsburgh Pirates. Founded by Art Rooney, the team shared its name and colors with the city's baseball team. It was an era of tough football, leather helmets, and a struggling franchise. In a bid to rebrand and forge a unique identity, the team announced a naming contest in 1940. A local fan, Joe Santoni, who worked in a steel mill, suggested the name Steelers to honor Pittsburgh's powerful steel industry. The name resonated with the city's blue-collar ethos, and thus the Pittsburgh Steelers were born. They adopted a new logo and colors, and a new chapter in NFL history was penned. Number 8. The Immaculate Play for the Ages the annals of NFL history are filled with unforgettable moments, but few resonate like the play known as the Immaculate Reception. It was December 23, 1972, a cold and biting day in Pittsburgh, where the Steelers were hosting the Oakland Raiders in a divisional playoff game. With 22 seconds left, trailing 7-6, the Steelers faced a desperate situation on fourth down. Quarterback Terry Bradshaw, under heavy pressure, heaved a pass downfield towards halfback John Frenchy Fuqua. As Fuqua and Raiders defender Jack Tatum collided, the ball ricocheted backward into the arms of fullback Franco Harris, who scooped it up and ran into the end zone for the game-winning touchdown. The play was engulfed in controversy over whether it was legal, but it was ultimately ruled a touchdown, catapulting the Steelers to their first-ever playoff win. The Immaculate Reception is not just a play, it's a symbol of fate, fortune, and football magic. A moment that's forever etched in the collective memory of Steelers Nation. Number 7. An Unbreakable Steel Wall There are defenses, and then there's the Steel Curtain. The name itself conjures images of an impenetrable wall, a fortress unyielding to any offensive assault. And that's precisely what the Pittsburgh Steelers' defense was during the 1970s. Led by the likes of Mean Joe Green, Elsie Greenwood, Ernie Holmes, and Dwight White, the Steel Curtain was the heart and soul of the team's four Super Bowl victories in six years. Their dominating performances were works of art, poetry in motion, blending raw power and surgical precision. Opposing quarterbacks were often left bruised and bewildered, running backs stymied, and receivers locked down. The Steel Curtain became synonymous with a blue-collar work ethic, fierce determination, and a relentless pursuit of excellence. A defense that didn't just stop the opponent, it crushed their spirits. Number 6. The Backup Quarterback Secret the world knew Terry Bradshaw as the Steel City's golden arm, the man under center during Pittsburgh's 1970s dynasty. But what few people know is the lengths the Steelers went to find the perfect backup. In the early 1970s, hidden from the public eye, the team conducted secret auditions with players from various backgrounds, including some who had never played professional football. They were desperate to find a gem, an uncut stone that could be polished into Bradshaw's perfect understudy. Among those who tried out were athletes from other sports and even a few local semi-pro players. Though the secretive project never yielded the next big star, 
It was an example of the Steelers' innovative and outside-of-the-box thinking, leaving no stone unturned in their pursuit of excellence. Number five, the stealth scouting of a pioneer. Sometimes the real game changers operate behind the scenes. Such was the case with Bill Nunn, a pioneer in NFL scouting. Nunn's journey with the Steelers began as a part-time scout in 1967, quietly working to undercover talent that others often overlooked. His connection to historically black colleges and universities, HBCUs, was his secret weapon, enabling him to identify stars like John Stallworth, Mel Blunt, and Elsie Greenwood. Nunn's ability to see the potential where others didn't change the landscape of scouting, but his work was often conducted in shadows, away from the limelight. His story is a testament to the power of vision, perseverance, and the belief that talent can be found in the most unexpected places. Number four, the naming of the famous curtain. The moniker Steel Curtain is synonymous with the Pittsburgh Steelers' impenetrable defense of the 1970s. But did you know that this name was not coined by a player, coach, or journalist? It was actually the result of a fan contest held by the Steelers in 1971. Joe Gordon, the team's public relations director, wanted a catchy phrase to encapsulate the team's defensive prowess. They received thousands of entries, but it was lifelong Steelers fan Gregory Kronz's suggestion of Steel Curtain that won the contest and became a legend. The team awarded Kronz with a pair of season tickets, but his true reward was seeing his phrase become a lasting symbol of one of the NFL's greatest defenses. Number three, a Super Bowl trophy disappearance. Every Steelers fan knows the pride and joy of possessing six Super Bowl trophies. But did you know that the sixth trophy went missing for a time? In a peculiar twist of events, the sixth Lombardi Trophy, won in Super Bowl 43, temporarily vanished from the team's display. A routine inventory check in 2009 revealed the trophy's absence. Panic and a frantic search ensued, with even the local police getting involved. After a nail-biting week, the trophy was found tucked away in a rarely used storage closet. The culprit? A staff member who mistakenly placed it there during a cleaning. A blunder turned into a humorous story, a testament to the vibrant and unexpected moments that make up the Steelers' legacy. Number two, you thought you knew Ernie Stautner. Known for his prowess on the field, Ernie Stautner was a legend in the defensive line for the Steelers, playing 14 seasons from 1950 to 1963. But off the field, Stautner harbored a unique talent that many were unaware of. He was an accomplished painter, when he wasn't tackling opponents, he was delicately crafting landscapes and portraits. His teammates were often awed by his ability to switch from the brute force of the gridiron to the finesse of the artist's brush. Stautner's works were even exhibited in local galleries, showing that the Man of Steel had a softer, creative side. A true Renaissance man, Ernie Stautner's artistic passion is a lesser known but delightful part of Steeler's lore. Number one the Great Pittsburgh Grass Mystery. The battleground of the Steelers' Akershire Stadium holds a mystery as deep as the game itself. What many fans might not know about is the unique grass blend that carpets the field. In 2001, the management decided to create a special mix known as the Desso Grassmaster System. It's a blend of natural grass and synthetic fibers designed to provide an optimal playing surface. But the proportions and specific grass varieties? A tightly guarded secret. Groundsmen have playfully hinted at a secret sauce, a unique blend that offers better grip and resilience. Some even say the turf is as tailored to the Steelers' play style as their playbook. The grass itself has become a legend, its precise formula known to only a select few within the organization. A fitting number one for our list, the turf of Akershire Stadium is a hidden marvel that plays a quiet but crucial role in every game. A legacy etched in steel. As we close this journey through the hidden treasures of the Pittsburgh Steelers, let's take a moment to marvel at the legacy they've built. From the forging of the steel curtain to the artistry of individual players, the Steelers are more than just a team. They're a symbol of strength, resilience, and excellence. Here in the heart of Steel City, a football game is more than just a match. It's a unifying force that brings together families, friends, and fans.
So Steeler Nation, if you've been inspired by these black and gold stories, hit that like button with the force of Mean Joe Green. All right, maybe not that hard. Subscribe to Kickoff Zone and make sure to share this video with your fellow Steelers fans. Remember to wave those terrible towels high and keep the Steelers spirit alive, just as the furnaces once roared in Pittsburgh's mills. Until next time, stay strong, Steeler Nation, and as always, here we go, Steelers, here we go.